Today we'll be talking about peste de petites ruminants. Peste de petites ruminants. For those people who keep goats, sheep, cattle and all that, you will know these as PPR. PPR, it's a disease that is quite common in goats, sheep and cattle. Well, uh, guys, you can see there is a sunset on this other side of the farm, uh, right behind me. And at the same time, you can see we have the turbines, the wind turbines. That is actually Kipeto Wind Power Project that is just right behind uh, our farm here at Olosuyan. And right behind me is the Kipeto Hills. As you can see, that is where we generate power and they supply Kengen with this power so that they can be connected to the national grid. So whatever it is that you are here in Kenya, you are able to get electricity. Of course, it's cool. That's why I'm donned in this Maasai blanket. Anywho, uh, today, I, I think it's just perfect that I do a shoot here uh, while standing, because it will not be a long shoot. Today, we'll be talking about peste de petites ruminants. Peste de petites ruminants. For those people who keep goats, sheep, cattle and all that, you will know these as PPR. PPR, it's a disease that is quite common in goats, sheep and cattle. It's called Peste de Petites Ruminants or PPR in short. So we'll be referring to it as PPR. <laughs> for those who are new in this channel, my name is Samuel. This is Africa Farming, a channel focused on new generation farmers and new entrants in farming who are willing to learn new farming practices. So take a second or two to subscribe. Hit on the notification bell so that YouTube can always notify you whenever we have a new video release. So today we'll be talking about PPR which is uh, caused by a mobile virus closely related to rinderpest. I hope you guys remember what rinderpest virus are. For those people who are in livestock keeping, I'm sure you know what rinderpest is. So um, PPR is closely related to uh, rinderpest and, and actually it affects uh, sheep, goats and you know, uh, wild relatives, wild animals that are relatives to small, you know, domesticated ruminants. So you'll find that is why actually it's called peste de petites ruminants. It affects small ruminants uh, that are actually closely related to these domesticated small anim uh, ruminants that you have in your farm. So you might find your sheep and your goats being attacked by PPR. PPR is characterized by high morbidity and mortality rates and it has a high impact on the economy of people who depend on sheep and goats for their livelihoods. But let's not worry a lot about this because uh, FAO, that is Food Agriculture Organization I think, uh, in, in, in collaboration with other organizations has actually developed a strategy to eradicate this disease by the year 2030. Now, before we go to that, I will give you the symptoms of this disease. Then I'll tell you what FAO has done to ensure that this disease is eradicated by 2030. So what are some of the symptoms of PPR? Whatever it is that you are, what do you look at to know if your sheep or goats or your small ruminants or even camels, if you have them, are affected by PPR? So number one, uh, affected animals will actually be presented by high fever and depression along with eye and nozzle discharge. So when you see that happening in your sheep or goats, just know that that is a sign of PPR. Secondly, you'll find that your animals cannot actually eat comfortably because their mouth around this um, area, uh, you'll find a lot of lesions and they are painful. So animals decide not to eat just because of the lesions that are painful around the mouth area. So when you see that also know that that might be a symptom of PPR. And in addition to that, you'll find that those animals are actually um, affected by secondary infections such as pneumonia and diarrhea. So PPR sometimes, uh, or even most of the times, does not just, uh, you know, attack your animals independently. You'll find that also your animals will exhibit symptoms and signs of pneumonia and diarrhea. Of course, we'll be talking about pneumonia very soon so that you know the signs and symptoms to look out for. The third symptom or not really symptom, it's more of an outcome, is actually death for your animals. So um, it has, as I said, PPR has high mortality and morbidity rates. So you'll find that most of your sheep and goats are actually dying at an alarming rate. Those are actually the signs and symptoms, but now let's go to what FAO has done to ensure eradication of this disease. 
Now there are two things that will actually help us or rather there are two things that actually make us believe that this disease will be eradicated by 2030. The first one is that this disease is caused by only one serotype and this means that it does not have what we call a carrier state. You see there, there are some diseases that have carrier states meaning uh, somebody might or an animal might be infected but not show visible signs and symptoms thereby spreading the disease is very easy. When it comes to PPR, it does not have a carrier state. So that is a good sign because um, in terms of controlling it, it will actually be easier. Secondly, it only affects domesticated small ruminants, right, and their relatives. So uh, you will not find this disease attacking, uh, you know, species that are outside these. So when it comes to controlling the disease, we are only working with some you know, a small species of small ruminants, domesticated small ruminants. So it is easier to eradicate. It's not like uh, those diseases like, uh, you know, foot and mouth that affects all types of livestock. This one only affects those small ruminants. So it's just a small category that, uh, you know, we are supposed to control the, you know, the spread of this disease. So that is also a good sign. Now, the second reason why we believe that in... Um, that this disease will actually be eradicated by 2030 is that it has a very high quality vaccine that is lifelong. It offers lifelong immunity. It does not have like a period of time. It has lifelong immunity and it is actually very inexpensive and readily available in your, your nearest agrovets, you know, and veterinary areas or veterinary offices where you can actually find uh, you know, any other type of drugs or medicine for or vaccines for your goats and sheep. So the vaccine is very good because it's lifelong. And secondly, it is very inexpensive, meaning it's cheap, inexpensive cheap. <laughs> and secondly, it is very inexpensive. So meaning that almost everybody can afford. And at the end of the day, it is readily available wherever it is that you are. So that is also a good sign that by 2030, we will have eradicated this disease. So those two are the reasons. So the number one reason is it has only one serotype, meaning that it does not affect a large variety of animals, only a small species of small ruminants. And secondly, as I've said, there is a high quality vaccine available that is inexpensive. And this vaccine offers lifelong immunity. That's it for us today in this disease series. I hope you've learned what PPR is when it comes to sheep and goats and other small ruminants that are domesticated in your home. And until next time, stay woke, stay peaceful and always remember to changamka na ukulima. Bye bye. I think the sunset is gone, but I hope you can see the views on Kipeto Hills and those good lights from the chicken farm.